Hello, this is Leela Viss of 88pianokeys.me and I am in a different seat. I am sitting in the seat of an interviewer and I am going to enjoy my time asking Tim Topham all kinds of questions. And I'm pretty sure you know Tim Topham because he hangs out here. Um, me, and I am in I believe, a different seat. I am sitting in oh. the... Oh, you'll need to... Sorry, Lily, you'll need to mute. You must have the window open where you're where you're it's being broadcast. Right. Just mute that window. Um, so just mute the video. Feed. And I am <laughs> that's funny. I am in a different seat. I am sitting. Oh, you'll need to. Sorry, Lily. You'll need to mute. You must have the window open where you're where you're it's being broadcast. Right. I how do you mute, mute that? Um, just under the video. There'll be a speaker icon. Under the video, speaker icon. Or you can close that window, Leela, if you want to. That's what I'm doing, yeah. Thank God we're stuck in a loop. <laughs> have you right and we're still yeah, live. Yeah. okay yeah. well I do know how to edit on YouTube so I'll do some okay. editing. <laughs> that's a classic awesome. yeah. well oh, that's the things you learn that's all good know, exactly Bradley just did it for our um, last webinar so I still have not been in the driver's seat of all this so we'll just start again how's that yeah all right done okay done. all right <laughs> So hello, my name is Leela This, and I'm from 88pianokeys.me, and I'm excited to in, uh, introduce my guest to you, Tim Topham, but I really don't think an introduction is necessary because I think pretty much everybody knows who Tim Topham is. However, if you don't, you are lucky because you get to learn all about him today. So I'm really thrilled that you're here with us, Tim, and I think it would be great to start out this interview with you telling us what you were doing last night. <laughs> Sounds a bit interesting, but no. um, Leila, it's so good to chat with you. I always love hanging out online. Um, you know, you you are just doing so many amazing things for teachers all over all over the world. So I really just wanted to say that up front. It's an absolute honor to be talking with you at any stage because I know how busy you are. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, I, I teach at a, a college over here in Melbourne, um, Australia, and last night was our jazz night. So we had um, all our jazz ensembles playing. There was about, I think, six or seven of them. We have a staff band. We've got a, a choir as well. Um, so the college I teach at is um, so more like a school for you guys. So I don't think university think um, K-12 to school. Um, and so the bands sort of start with the younger guys and end up with the top level bands. And the parents come along, sit around the table. They have drinks and food and it's great. Really, really cool, chilled evening. It's how music should be enjoyed, I think. I think even Bradley, I think Bradley would approve. Oh, my. Now, are you instructing any of these jazz musicians yourself? Um, I'm not. Uh, I, I teach the some of the pianists who play, so I give them some help, but I don't conduct any of the groups as such. And so all of your pianists then get an opportunity to play with a band. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Well, not all of them, but we actually, because there's only a limited number of bands, we have to audition them at the end of each year. And the best guys go through and, and get the chance to play with a, a big band. It's pretty cool. Nice. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Check that off your list. You are now finished with that. Yeah, I know. That's good. Another another big tick. And uh, sorry if I do sound a bit croaky. It was a late one and I'm a bit tired. But I'm raring to go because I love chatting to, uh, to you and piano teachers about piano teaching stuff. It's great. Well, what's fascinating to me, Tim, is the fact that you're holding down quite a few different jobs in some ways because it sounds like the school opportunity is more than just teaching piano lessons to students is that correct uh it is in as much as so my role is head of keyboard there so i, I look after all the piano teaching that goes on at the school um, we've got a three campus school so it's pretty pretty big job there's about seven staff 
Um, I conduct, I do conduct one of the bands, not a jazz band. It's actually a concert symphonic band, um, and uh, do a lot of the accompanying at the school. Um, and I teach, obviously, teach students as well. So it is, it's a big job. It's busy, um, but it gives me a lot of opportunity to do a lot of a lot of different things, which is great. And that's why I like a school context. Now. In my area, there are no schools that have someone hired, and you are full time, I assume, to be in charge of keyboard type events like what you're talking about. So that is very unique. Is that typical in Australia? It's more typical, certainly, than in America. So in Australia, the the more typical thing is that students will come out of their normal lessons uh, for a one on one instrumental lesson, and that could be you know trombone, drums, or piano. Um, and as part of that, they'll be in a in a group. If they're an instrumentalist, they'll always be in an orchestra or a band of some sort. And the pianists, we try and get either in as percussionists, or if there's a piano position, they can do that. Um, but yeah, that's that's the kind of standard model over here in Australia. We we have a, a higher percentage of um, independent schools, and so this kind of model works a lot in the independent schools, less so in the government schools. And are those lessons during the school day that you teach? They are, yeah. So they come out of class for half an hour, an hour, 45 minutes, and then they go back. Wow. Hopefully re-inspired re for their maths lesson. All of us teachers are hanging with our mouths open because we would love to be teaching during the school hours. So that is very fortunate, and I think you need to come back to the States since you were just here and um, teach all – uh, our schools here in the States, how to implement a program like that. I'd be all over it. Well, I'd be interested to know whether, because I know private schooling is a much smaller thing in the States. I wonder whether any of the private schools operate in the same way over there. I'll have to do some research to see. There are some that I know of. And actually, I was hired for four years to teach in a public school uh, because they got a huge federal grant to incorporate more arts into learning. And so they wanted a keyboard classes for all of their second through fifth graders. And then it expanded. And um, it was the hardest job I ever had. And that was all group lessons. Right. Okay. But that was very unique. That was um, an, an extraordinary amount of money that was given for those school systems. So it was, it was a really neat opportunity. But that's unique. Mm. That's not typical. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think that's that's probably where it's at. Um, but I see. I, and I think uh, your teachers, teachers over in America who are teaching concert band instruments or orchestral instruments, I, I give them huge credit because you have to somehow teach students how to play their instrument when you've got sixty of them in front of you. I think that's kind of how it works. You know, you don't have instrumental lessons one on one. So, wow, that's that's a huge job. Um, I give them real credit for doing being able to do it. Well, it would be really cool to implement some of the programs that you have in Australia. So I think we got to get you Australians over here more often to influence. <laughs> you know, you know, I love coming to America. <laughs> well, let's go there next then, because that was one of my big questions: is why would you hike yourself all the way over to Texas to come to an MTNA <laughs> conference? I really want to know why. Well, look, there's a really simple reason. Um, two very simple reasons. One is that. The conference this year happened to coincide with my school holidays, so I was able to go easily without missing things. Um, and secondly, I've always wanted to go to an MTNA and I hadn't been before, so this was my first opportunity to go to one. So they're the kind of simple reasons. At a, at a deeper level, um, the, the real reason that I wanted to go was to, to catch up with a whole lot of people that I've now met online and met at uh, Chicago last year. Um, and to also just, just you know, I love learning. I, I love learning and I love chatting with people and networking and just hanging out, talking education. And so these are great opportunities. And I learned heaps from this conference. Yeah, I picked up so many great things. So you know, I'm, I'm, you know, not by any means close to finishing my education and think I know it all. I'm ready to learn all the time. And that's a great place to do it. Well, I think, did you have little people following you all the time? Because you are very popular. In fact, I was just talking to Deborah Perez, and she was thinking that you came out to Texas just so you could wear your shorts. I, I was, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I felt right at home. It was beautiful. The weather was so nice in San Antonio. It was, it was just, it was like a, a Melbourne summer's evening. It was great. Really enjoyed it. But I look, I, I did, I loved 
meeting people and I love that reaction when people go, oh, I've listened to you or I've seen you online or I read your stuff. Like that's that's really, really cool. And it, you know, it makes all the effort you put in um, to the work that you do really um, makes it worthwhile. Well, I think that um, the point that you came is fascinating because what we're finding is that, yes, all of these online uh, options and blogs and podcasts and all that kind of stuff uh, bring us new friends. And then we want to see our friends. It really is not enough to just do a Google Hangout. You know, we really do want to see each other in person. So I love webinars. I love podcasts. We learn so much from them. But there is something about that person-to-person, face-to-face contact that is mm. really so important. And this um, that's what's unique about this whole um, blogging world now. It's brought us all closer. This the world is a little bit smaller. And so it is really nice that you have made your way out here. So I do have a question for us uh, uh, Americans over here or anyone else who's interested in going to Australia. When should we make our way over to Australia and what conferences should we go to? Well, the best time is, is our summer, I guess. It depends what kind of weather you like. Um, if you like miserable, drizzly, wet, cold weather, then, well, I see, not even cold. I'm talking to someone who lives in snow, of course. Um, so let me just tell you right now, it, let's see, it's April 29, is that right? It's been snowing yep. all day and it's 32 degrees here. So I am so ready for something new. So yes, continue. <laughs> right, so, so if you want to come, if you want to see what how close we get to snow, which is not very close, um, then you'd come in winter, which is our June, July, August, September. Um, we do actually have snow. We have um, about six or seven mountain resorts for skiing here between Melbourne and Sydney at the bottom kind of right corner of, of Australia. So if you want to do that, then that's the time to come. If you want to come for summer beaches and um, you know surfing and that sort of thing, then you come in December, January, February. It's even into March now. Really, is the, the hot weather, and that's when we get well over um, your eighty degrees pretty regularly, I guess. But the um, conference-wise, um, I think the other reason I do enjoy coming to America is because we have limited conferences here. Um, really, we only have one um, Australasian piano pedagogy conference. That's held biennially in July, kind of time of the year, and it's more. It's very similar timing to the NCKP, so it's on the same kind of schedule, which is kind of annoying. And it's at the same time of the year, so it's in winter, <laughs> and it's at the end of July or the start of July. Um, but look, if if people are interested, that's the conference to come to over here. It moves around um, cities. I think it's in Adelaide next year. It was in Perth this year. Um, and that's uh, you know similar kind of thing to the NCKP uh, or the MTNA conferences, but on a smaller basis. We don't have quite the numbers that you have. Well, let me just put a little idea in your head, Tim, because you know you've got a big blog, you've got a big following, you started this inner circle thing, you've got these podcasts. I'm thinking you have it, this is prime fertile ground for a Tim Topham conference. How's that? Uh, yeah, it's it's on the cards actually, Leila. I've been um, you can you can have have the very early scoop on the fact that yes, this is something that I'm I'm very much interested in, um, and I know we're gonna we'll probably talk about the inner circle later. But one one of my plans is to start with some simple meetups for members of that group in Australia, firstly, um, and then I've got some plans to work on something overseas. I would love to do that. Um, there, there, there's no doubt that you're right. I love putting together face to face gatherings and I know how important they are and I think I think it could be really good so stay tuned stay tuned I can't give you more information at the moment because I don't have it but it's in my head and well, it's on paper <laughs> that's kind of surprising that we even came to this uh, conversation because I was not expecting that little surprise but that is exciting. all right so there you go. you've got the, you've got the scoop 88 oh, wow. keys <laughs> all right <laughs> Well, you know what? Let's go to the inner circle next because uh, you did a wonderful podcast with uh, Marie Lee, uh, whom we both know. It's just oh my God, how good is Marie Lee? I love her, and I got to meet her finally at MTNA. She is the coolest. I knew she'd be cool, but she was even cooler in person. Yes, and um, yeah, and it, it, that was a unique uh, experience with her and I because she contacted me about just a consultation about her studio. 
And um, so then I wrote a blog about her because I just thought it was so interesting how she morphed her studio at home into this very successful studio in a, a storefront. And man, it's just exploded after that. She's just been very popular. So it's yep. fun to watch her succeed. Absolutely. I agree. But let's go back to your inner circle now because uh, during that podcast, you gave us some good information about what you imagine that being and what made you decide to do the inner circle or to, to create that? Yeah, cheers. So um, the inner circle, for those that aren't unaware, I've got, um, I've built a community on my website, um, a private members community effectively of piano teachers who are all, you know, thinking, doing similar things, thinking in a similar way about really real, being really progressive in their teaching, really, um, uh, people who are really motivated and committed and dedicated to their art and uh, most importantly who are really keen to share ideas with groups of other people who are, are just like them so that's the basis behind the inner circle the reason i started it was as you said i've got um, a reasonable number of people who follow what i do um, but there was no easy way for them to actually chat with each other or or get to know each other in any way other than leaving a comment on a blog post. And I thought, you know, this is if it was just such a wasted opportunity. We've just been talking about how important face-to-face -face meetings are. While a forum online isn't quite face-to-face, -face, it's getting closer. Um, and so I thought, well, here's an opportunity to get a group of people together and really start a movement, hopefully. And that, that's, that's my real plan for the Inner Circle, is to have the right kind of people with like-minded attitudes to teaching um, and being really innovative and entrepreneurial and just see what we can do with with where piano teaching goes in the future. That's that's what I'd really like to do. Very good. So uh, I had a list of why. So I think you covered the why. So how are you going about uh, creating this inner circle. I think there's, you know, probably some technical things that we don't even want to know about, but I know they're big hurdles, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so look, I mean, the the, the con technically the concept is is all built into my website, um, and so it's it's all a, a straightforward sort of login. But um, once once you're in the inner circle, um, the the way it all works is that we we center around a forum. Uh, so an online forum, it's a little bit like a Facebook group, except um, <laughs> the reason I didn't use, I've purposefully not used Facebook. Um, and there's a couple of reasons behind that. One is that uh, I think it's incredibly easy to get distracted on Facebook. And you might go there to find a resource or to, to find an old conversation that you remember someone having once upon a time, and you'll end up just getting distracted with all the other stuff that goes on on Facebook. Um, and that's, you know, its purpose is to distract, really, and show you ads. Um, so I got it off off Facebook and I've built a forum. So a forum where people can ask questions, they can respond to questions. Most importantly, they can upload things. Um, they can accept challenges. So we've got this, this cool idea of um, we uh, the kind of fortnightly challenges at the moment where I'll post something and say, okay, guys, here's the challenge for the next week. The first one was practice. I need you to practice for five hours for yourself this week. Uh, and we've got a sheet you can download, track your time, upload it. Um, and it was amazing that that was a really kind of simple concept that made people stop and think and the response to that was amazing people went oh, I'm so glad I did this. I can't believe it's been so long since I actually committed to my own practice So that's kind of another another feature of it um, But the other important thing about staying away from Facebook and building it into my own site is that you can search for things and you can find things everything stays nothing sort of disappears off the top of a news feed it, it's all there and you can all you can find it and so i think that's the most kind of important part of of the inner circle so you've got the forum you've got the challenges um and some of the other kind of features i won't go through all of them but um all, obviously my resources are all in there so anything that i have sold my piano flicks my downloads worksheets all that kind of stuff it's all in the inner circle so any members can just grab it whenever they need it um, and I love uploading teaching videos in fact I've got one that I took last week of me working with a student on garage band and doing some creative stuff with chord progressions so that's going to be uploaded in there all my conference presentations that's where they go um, and lastly without sort of boring everyone <laughs> um, the other thing that I'm really excited by is the monthly meetup meetups we have online so similar to what we're doing here except we have a whole group of people 
um, and we all get together and we have that chat. So we've gone from sort of, you know, the, the chatting by text here to chatting by video, and then hopefully down the track, chatting in person. Nice. Can you give us just a brief way of finding all of these things? If we belong to the inner circle, where are where are we going to find these resources in the forum and the videos and all that? Yeah. So once um, once you get access and you log in, you'll actually see a new a new mem uh, members menu pops up at the top. And then that's where you access everything. So there's a kind of a community forum link. There's an introduction. You've got a news feed of all the stuff that's been going on. You've got uh, links to the resources. You've got links to a whole lot of bonuses that I've arranged with um, various partners to give you discounts off various things. So it's all, all in the menu system once you've logged in. OK, very good. It, uh, the next thing is we talked about the why and the how and now the what. And I just want to let you know that um, not really plugging our latest web webinar, but uh, Bradley Sowash and I held a webinar, Group Your Theory, and it was interesting because we asked you to um, spread the word for us, and um, remarkably, your, your um, presence and influence was very high because a number of the people that attended our webinar came from uh, your direction. Uh, so we really appreciate it, but also I think that means something bigger. It does mean that you are a specific crowd, and um, I think I think people are figuring out which crowd they want to be in. If they're in a Tim Toppin crowd or attending a, a Bradley and Leela uh, uh, webinar, it's going to be a certain type of personality, don't you think? Yeah, I, I agree, um, and I'm so glad to hear how well it went, Leela. I, I can't wait to watch it myself. I've, as I've said to everyone, that's on my my highest priority for the next few weeks is to make time to watch it. So if you haven't watched it, I don't know why anyone listening to this wouldn't have been on that live call, but if you're in Australia and it was 3 a.m. or whatever it was, make sure you watch it because I know I don't even have to you know, have seen it to know that it will be an absolute value bomb for everyone. So um Get in there and watch it. I can't wait to do that. But yes, thank you for. Um, I'm, I'm really glad to have forwarded people to you because I know how valuable it is. Um, but on the whole, sort of crowd and, and and tribe, almost. You know, we we. You're right. We all um, have been building our own groups of people um, who have kind of similar attitudes to us um, and think in similar ways. And I think that's what community is all about. That's why people get together um, to do anything, really. Um, and I think that's why uh, another reason why the inner, I'm so proud, I guess, of the inner circle and the teachers that are in there at the moment is because they're all, it's not that we're all sort of mindlessly thinking the same way and doing exactly the same thing, but we're all challenging each other and we're all open to new new ideas and some of the teaching resources and the improvisation workbooks and stuff that are being uploaded and freely shared by people are just it's phenomenal it, it is so good and i think that's another big difference to some of the facebook type groups where you just get I don't know, a few thousand people in some of those facebook groups but they're all really really different so you tend to get a lot of the same kind of questions coming up or complaints or rants or whatever it is um, about things that for, for a lot of people, it's just that's just not really relevant. Um, and so that's why I think it's great. You know, you've got your fantastic crew at 88 Creative Keys and I can't wait to get to one of your actual mm -hmm. workshops one day. You know, and you've got that tribe of people who love that and are sharing that idea and just blitzing it. You've got your website, which is just fantastic. I was just reading one of your posts just a moment ago about your next camp and what you're doing with that. Like, it's it's just so good to, to have these crews and now between us kind of share, share the love around it and just kind of expand our groups to include each other. I think it's brilliant. Well, you know, why not? Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that why we like Tim Topham is because you remain positive. And I think we need to stay positive. This We are really in a, a unique profession. And, you know, really, we're our own bosses in a lot of ways. Maybe you aren't because you're in your 
uh, working for a school, but we really get to design so much of what we do every day. And that keeps it fresh for me. I am never, never, ever bored. I, would, I don't even like that word. Um, and it's, it's so stimulating. And I, I really do think that it's important for us to remain positive. So thank you for leading the way on that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and, and you too. I mean, you, you can't help but be engaged by your personality and your positivity, Leela. You know, you rock this, you rock this, uh, this whole piano teaching thing. Love it. Well, thank you. Now, let's just a couple, couple of things before we, I know you're a busy man, but let's pick your brain on a couple of things. Uh, because I'm big into technology and apps specifically, and because I love creativity, um, it'd be fun to get a little preview of maybe what you did with the GarageBand app or, you know, do you have a favorite lesson opener, you know, when that kid walks in the door and you can just tell he's tired, you know, what are some of the tools that you pull out of your toolbox that makes things fun? Yeah, well, uh, a lot, yeah, I think GarageBand I'm, I'm really starting to have more and more fun with. I didn't, I've always known it's existed, but I haven't played around with it that much until this year. In fact, in fact, this term for us, so in the last four or five weeks, because I've got a couple of students in year seven and eight over here who aren't, who were, they were kind of close to quitting at the start of this year. Like they weren't going to come back for lessons. I've been teaching them for a couple of years, all, all, all great, but just didn't have that drive or whatever. So I said, look, let's do something completely different. Um, and so we've decided to set a project for this term, and that's to create some music. And they decided to do this. And so we're using GarageBand to explore this. So uh, look, I think for, for any teacher, if you can set aside maybe an hour, and look, I think, I think there's gonna be a webinar coming up on this from my kind of end about how I do this, because I think it is really, really good. But to just get a student to compose a four chord progression and there's plenty of resources on my site, probably yours as well, about how they can do that. It's not very difficult. Create a four chord progression in a key and then use some of the smart instrument settings in GarageBand. So basically a smart instrument is, is like for guitar or I think there's piano, although I don't use the piano because I want them to do the smart piano stuff, <laughs> bass and drums. They can pretty much press, if their chord progression starts with a C chord, they can press C and the guitar will play a whole lot of different patterns and they can choose which pattern it plays. It can kind of sound bluegrassy, it can sound rocky. And suddenly, you know, you can see eyes go wide open. They've invented this chord progression. They might not have plucked the guitar strings, but they're making this incredible music. I, I think GarageBand, I'm going to do more and more with GarageBand um, in the coming sort of months and just keep exploring it because I'm, I'm learning as I go and I always say that to my students, you know, let's learn this together. I, I don't know what all these buttons do and sometimes I get stuck and normally they work it out, but let's learn it together. That's kind of fun, right? I think that's the key to using technology in your teaching is get rid of the fear and jump in with both feet and have fun and if you do that with your students, they will be more than happy to tell you what to do most of the time. But yeah, they can figure things out. But yeah, getting rid of that fear and let's go for it. Um, yeah. Is a great and, and also, sorry, Lila, and also keep, keeping, keep in mind that technology is just a tool. I, I say this to a lot of people when I speak. It's just a tool and it's not a particularly exciting tool for most students because they've grown up with it. Gen Z have never known a world without iPads and, and Google and the internet. So when you get out an iPad and you're excited about it, that's great. But just remember that it's what you do with it that will be exciting for the student. It's not the fact that they're using an iPad normally. So that's my experience anyway. I completely agree. I'm so excited about the project that I'm doing right now in my studio and I'm not letting the word out yet because I too am, I, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I tell you what, this is just rock and rolled and I'm so excited. Tomorrow is my uh, spring recital and it's coming full circle now at the recital. Yeah. Yeah. So have you, have you, is this an app? Can you give us a sneak peek? Is this I am that... using an app. Um, yes. It's, actually a book creator app so my students are creating their own books um but it and has something to do with making their own music and all that kind of yeah, stuff. yeah right this uh, oh, this sounds cool this could uh, and you're, you're gonna blog about it 
<laughs> yeah, I think there may be something um, in the future. It has something to do with Bradley's, um, one of his new videos that's coming out called Winter Blues. Um, yep. And um, I, it, I don't know, it's one of those things that just ha has progressed and probably you find that same thing. The idea is there, but you just don't know which direction it's going to take and all, yeah, of, all work together. And absolutely. It's fun. And I think yep. again, you and I just never then get tired. We don't, you know, you can hear people complain, maybe rant, maybe vent. Um, I don't feel that way for the most part because I'm way too busy thinking about what we're going to do next, you know? Absolutely. And just being creative and trying out new stuff. And as, as you say, not being afraid of what could happen, just just give it a shot, you know? What's the worst that can happen? The app might crash or, you know, you, you stop being able to use it so you work out how to do it for the next lesson. It's, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, anything else you'd like to share with him? What other kind of secrets do you have? Well, look, I think I still think I think you mentioned before, you know, what's your, you know, kind of go to starter starter lesson um, thing. I, I love mu Music Clock. I think it's an app that you've you've explored or talked about before. Um, M U S I C L O C K, great one if you want to get your students playing some scales, but do it a little bit differently with a kind of back a very simple kind of backing track concept. Go for it. Uh, that that app is not expensive and it's dead easy to use. You just press play and play a scale along to it, and 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 then though you can go all right. Well, let's improvise. Let's use a pentatonic scale instead of playing our scale. Let's um, work out the chord progression that underlies this particular backing track. You know, there's there's heaps of things you can do and you can just keep building as you go with a lot of these apps but just start simple and and start with a goal so we're trying to work out what you want to achieve and then which app will actually help you do that the best that that's what I think is, is a great way to go and look I still use the blues every now and then the 12 bar blues is still a winner um, uh, what else um, and iReal Pro iReal Pro, which I know you guys talked about in your last webinar, so I'm not going to talk about iReal Pro because you are the pro of iReal Pro, and I need to learn from you first. Bradley's the real pro, and I learned from him, but it is a powerful app. <laughs> and I think that's what is unique about GarageBand versus Music Clock, is there's certain apps that trigger creativity, and then there's certain apps that trigger um, creative content, and, and that's what's really unique about something like GarageBand, which I have stayed away from on the computer because I never liked it. It was it was too big. I tried it, but it was scary. But I agree, the app is much easier to use. So thank you for actually, hey, Yeah, that's a really good point, though, because I actually asked one of my students to bring it in because he had it on his laptop. Mm -hmm. And I could not work out where, to, like, it was it's so different. I couldn't, I don't even know if it does the same thing. So whatever you do, go for an iPad. Um, for, for, for GarageBand for sure, yeah. All right, well, I don't want to keep you too long, Tim, because I know you're a busy man, but it's been great to see you. And uh, anything else you'd like to add? Any little plug you want to add for your... Interview? Well, look, I, I would really love to give your readers a free seven-day trial of the Inner Circle if they would like it. So you can come in, you can explore what's going on, see the resources. Um, and I, I, also, I kind of liken resources in online communities a little bit like a, a supermarket. I think uh, it's, you use the word supermarket, don't you? Yes, we do. What do, I, what do I, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I remember when I was in San Antonio, I was trying to find a supermarket. Right? I was just, this is a little sidetrack here um, because I wanted some fruit. I just wanted to eat a banana, a banana right? Um, and so I walked up to the local, I don't know, it was just someone selling milkshakes or something and said, where do I, where do I get fresh fruit? Fruit, where do I get fruit? And he's like, oh, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe try the 7-Eleven down there. They've got fruit wraps and, and stuff like that. I'm like, no, 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 like fresh. Where, where's the shop? Where is the supermarket? And I thought I was talking another language. Well, I kind of am as an Australian. Um, it, it literally took me about three or four people to tell me where, I don't know what people eat over there, but to tell me where the actual green grocer like fruit place shop was. It was it was the funniest thing I've experienced. I eventually found it and it was one of the coolest, funkiest, newest groceries of organic produce that I've ever seen. It was brilliant. So what there you go. What was that? A Whole Foods? Yeah, it was like a Whole Foods. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Why was I talking about that? I've got no idea. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, because a seven day trial. You were talking. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, the supermarket. I was talking about the supermarket <laughs> idea. So, um, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, look, there's there's more resources in there that you could ever watch in a, a lot of time, or or sort of download and use. So, I look at something like the inner circle and the resources that are in there as a supermarket. You know, you don't go into a supermarket and pull every single item off the shelf and walk out with it just in the hope that you'll need it. You go in there and search for the thing you need right now. I need something to inspire my boys. I need something for my adult students. I need to do some improvising. So you go to the improvising section and you grab a resource. So um, think of it that way um, if you're going in for, for a have a, to have a look around. Um, but look, the trial trial will be seven days, completely free. You'll need to set up your subscription beforehand. It's a bit of a quirk with my software, um, but don't get worried. You're not going to get charged if you cancel within the seven days. Okay, totally fine. And even if you, you know, by chance forget or the time zones don't work, I'll sort it out. Total luck. I'm, I'm reasonable, and I want I want people to want to be in there. So um, the code will be Leela L E I L A eighty eight keys. Very nice. Thank you, Tim. That's You're really welcome. Really cool. Another bonus yeah. I wasn't expecting. There you go. No, look, I love. I know that your audience will love it because we're all, as we were saying before, we're all of a similar kind of tribe. Um, we're all creative, we're all inspiring, and uh, and that's the kind of people that you'll find in there. So more the merrier. Let's go. Exactly. And just a final note too. I. Uh, David Cutler wrote the book, The Savvy Music Teacher. And what's interesting is I feel like, you know, this whole technology, creativity, um, uh, diverse styles, because you like to teach pop music, those are three things that he pegged that the most successful teachers are doing in their studios. So kudos to you, again, for seeing that and doing that, because that's really... You know, if we're going to have successful studios, I believe it is those three things that really can set your studio apart. Yeah, cheers. And and by chance, funnily enough, I'm about to record a podcast with David Cutler. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I like like that's the okay. Tell him hi because I am I am stepping out of my comfort zone and I am attending his savvy musician event this summer. I remember reading about that. It sounds amazing. You like seriously, this I didn't realize until I started doing some research about David Cutler just how influential and innovative this guy is. He's I'm really looking forward to our conversation because I also happen to be giving a, a keynote speech coming up in a tech music tech conference about entrepreneurial careers for musicians. Um, and talking about the sort of things I'm doing and the possibilities that are out there so that we can help our students think bigger than performance even, you know, sort of even the yeah, the back, you know, like recording and arts management and stuff. Forget those. There's so much online. So um, it's going to be a great conversation. But you, you're going to have an amazing time at that event. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm going to be sleeping much. So No. Uh, Make sure you uh, you write about it or I, I'll interview. How about I, I could interview you back <laughs> about your experience on that. That would be cool. Good idea. And once I, you know, I blogged about it and then wouldn't you know, a couple of my readers decided to apply for a scholarship and they got it too. So there will be uh, three other people, including Marie Lee, uh, there as well. So fantastic. Oh, I'm glad to hear you all got in. That's great. Yeah. Wow. So yes, yeah, say hi to him for me. I will. And I will. Thanks so much, Tim, for your generous code and for your time. Um, it's really great to talk with you, and um, yeah, it's you're an important leader in this field of teaching piano, and you you make it fun, and um, we know that you have a heart for it, and and that's what's the most important thing. So yeah, thanks, Leila. Yeah. Yes. Cheers to uh, the Australia conference. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll get we'll get some of you guys over one of these times. I, I should say there's one thing I forgot to say, and that's where to actually use this code. So you better you better write down or tell your readers that it's timtopham.com forward slash community. Nice, easy to remember link. Okay. Uh, but look, thank you, Leela. You, you know, you're equally doing amazing things, and I can't wait to see what's in store for you. Uh, and maybe, you know, it's down the track, something for the two of us we could work together, maybe with Bradley as well, see how we can change this, uh, keep changing the world of piano teaching. I love it. Very good. All right. Thanks, Tim. 
Have Robin, you're welcome. Day. See you later. Bye.